Welcome back to the channel guys, so today we've got this little Toyota behind me, this is a hybrid and it is in for a reported battery drain over a couple of days, sometimes it lasts a wee bit longer, sometimes it doesn't, it has had a new battery fitted from Toyota, so we know it's got a good battery, so we are just doing a parasitic draw test at the minute to see what the reading is, so we'll leave it for another 15-20 minutes. The noise behind me is going to be quite annoying, so it's a wee bit noisy behind me, so hopefully the mic can take all that noise out. But we have let the car sit for about 15-20 minutes now, so we're going to let it sit for another 15 and see what the current draw is of the battery. So if I zoom in, right now we are currently sitting at 240 milliamps, and that is our battery connected in series with the earth terminal. So we know that 240 milliamps is far too high, so what we're going to do is do a volt drop test across the engine bay fuses and we're also going to do a volt drop test across the passenger compartment fuse box as well, just to see what's drawing this current. One thing you need to be aware of is with this particular car, once you go close to the doors, the interior lights will automatically come on if you've got your key in your pocket. So you need to make sure that the key is far away from the vehicle to carry out this test accurately, because I've just done that. So what I'm going to do is reconnect the battery back up, I'm going to open the doors, let the vehicle get to sleep, and we're going to do a millivolt drop test across each of the fuses, just to confirm what one is drawing the current when it shouldn't be. So we hope you can hear me through the background noise. There's a leaf blower currently going, and some dodgy music so you can see that we're just set to millivolts on a multimeter and we're going to go across each of the fuses but on camera we'll just go across the one just to show you what we should have so we're across that 10 amp fuse and you can see there that we have got a reading of zero which is ideally what we're wanting to see so that is an ideal reading that we are wanting to see, but if we do see a higher reading on one of those fuses, that can confirm that a consumer on that circuit is the one that's drawing the current, therefore draining the battery. So we're going to go into the passenger compartment fuse box and we're going to do the same test. Now, this would be the perfect time to use our thermal imager that has been sent to us by Milsey, I think that's how you pronounce it, but I've probably pronounced it wrong. But this is a wireless handheld thermal imager which you attach to your iPhone or Android and this might very well help us with the battery drain on this Toyota. So let's open the box and I'll show you it quickly. So once you open the box you've got this little pouch. So inside the pouch is your thermal imager. Now on the back here you can see we've got a QR code. If you scan that with your iPhone or Android camera, that will take you directly to the link to download the app that you need on your phone. So the way this works is you have got an adjuster here, which obviously will vary depending on the, the height of your phone. So my phone here, basically all I need to do is just flip, oh, flip this little top part up here and that is the thermal imager connected. Now, if I go onto the app, so if we click the app, when you're in the app, you need to turn on the on button there. If you can see that, you can see the little white LED lights up. And apart from that, we've got a bad network connection, but what we'll do is we'll click back off that and reset the app. That's just because of where I am at the moment. So you can see right now it is scanning for the device and it will give you the battery voltage of the device and all you need to do is connect it. So we'll join and that now should connect to the thermal imager wirelessly. So it might take a bit, but that is us connected to the thermal imager itself. And I don't know if you can see me, but that's basically it. 
So you can see I'm just moving about my van now. You can see I've had a couple of things on, on charge. You can see there's a few sort of bright heat sinks there. So all in all, it seems to be a good little tool that you can buy for your phone. So let's go and try it out on this little Toyota. So we're going to stick to the original sort of path that we're going to take. So you can see that we've got a little add-on there. You can see just underneath that 15 amp fuse is a 2 amp fuse. That is for a dash cam. So we're going to focus on that 2 amp circuit or that fuse just to see if we've got any sort of millivolt reading that can indicate that that is the issue. So all we need to do is go across that fuse which is easier said than done with these big probes and you can see right there once the glare goes away that is if I can try yep so we've got 6.2 so that right there is our parasitic drain so it's an aftermarket next base camera it's been fitted and this is causing the drain on this particular car so let's try the thermal imager on it and see if it can pick up any excess heat so we have got our thermal imager connected up and i don't know if you will see this but you can see that heat sink there that is the camera the little camera box it gets wired in to that fuse. So we've got a massive, massive heat there. Which is obviously the cause of our drain. So what we can also do is take a picture. So if we just click on picture button there. And that will take us on to a photo album. And that is a picture for the customer in case he asks for any proof. So you can see that a little thermal imager there picked up that heat spot no problem. So the backstory with this car is it was jump started reverse polarity and it ended up having to get recovered to Toyota in order to get resolved for the no start condition. Obviously um, it had blown a couple of fuses and stuff like that and it ended up having to get I think a fuse box I think that's what the customer said. So Toyota did sort that side of things, but the likely chances of that little box being spiked at the same time is pretty high. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that fuse and we're going to carry out another parasitic draw test just to confirm we haven't got any other drains coming from any other consumers on the car. So just a quick one as well, if you want to carry out a parasitic draw test on this particular car or any car that's got these sort of similar door switches, what I usually do is just disconnect them and latch the, the door itself. It's only held in by one bolt there and basically it still recognises as the door being shut just to prevent any of the interior lights coming on on the car. So let's get this fuse removed and we'll get our multimeter set up again to see what our reading is now. So what we're going to do now is just connect our multimeter back up in series so if we set our multimeter to amps and we will remove the battery terminal and just connect in series and let's see how quickly this car settles down. So obviously this battery drain was very easy to find, it was just a aftermarket dash cam but battery drains in general can be very difficult if they are intermittent so we typically like to come to a battery drain when it is always happening. The odd occasion that we do take one on that is a very intermittent fault, we end up we can't find it, it's just a nightmare because you can't be with the car 24 hours a day so battery drains in general they're okay, some of them can be a nightmare. 
So it's now been about 20 minutes and we've let the car go to sleep. And the good news is we have got a current draw now of 10 slash 20 milliamps, which is well within spec and won't drain this car anymore. So the tool that we used in this car, the little thermometer, that'll be left in the description if you're wanting to go and have a look at that. All the links will be left there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.